In today's gospel, one of the things about the gospel of Mark is the good thing is that it's short, the bad thing is that it's short. So there's really not a lot of information in today's gospel about the temptation. Jesus went out into the desert. The desert is not a sandy kind of a desert, you know, with nice little sand dunes and beautiful, beautiful views like that. It's really rocky and it's, it's just really hot and not very attractive. So if you go on the road to Jericho, you'll see um, the, the Mount of Temptation. The, uh, there's also a, uh, an Orthodox monastery um, that's just in a particularly just desolate place. Um, and so one of the good things is that Matthew and Luke provide some information that helps to fill in the gaps. And so for 40 days, Jesus was there in the desert. And after the 40 days, he was tempted with three temptations. The first temptation is turn the stones into bread. After all, you don't need God. Let's see what you can do. Maybe you can do it. You know, come on, prove it. You can do it. Um, turn, the, turn the rocks into stones. Have your fill. You don't need God. The second was jump off the, um, the temple and float like a feather. You want popularity? You want people to come to you? How about that? That will really get them excited. That will really get them buzzing. Uh, jump off the temple, float like a, float like a feather. Uh, the third is compromise. You know, worship me and everything can be yours. And I think that that was one of the things we see, especially in the early church. In the early church, it was not so much a matter of that they would not allow to worship God, because certainly the Christians would be allowed to worship God, but they also had to worship the emperor as well. You know, you can do whatever you want. There were other minority uh, religions within the empire. Uh, just worship the emperor and then do whatever you want. But the problem was with that was that they were not going to worship a false god um, so that they could worship the true god um, and to give the scandal to the people. So they refused to do that. And that's why they were imprisoned and ultimately killed. The other thing is that that idea of temptation is interesting because when we think about God in the Old Testament, God in the Old Testament is put to such heights in terms of knowledge, in terms of his power, uh, in terms of his uh, you know, control over the human race, that everything is kind of ascribed to God. And that becomes a big problem because... In the Old Testament, even temptations to evil are ascribed to God. So David uh, wants to number the people. Uh, he's tempted into doing that, but God tempts him. And then when he falls for the tempt, what happened is God kills 70,000 people. So again, it's like, what kind of a God is that? You know, the God that says, you know, that that's overpowers you with temptation and then, uh, and then kills uh, 70,000 people when you fall for the temptation. Uh, so again, that's a problem. So we think about the New Testament. The New Testament really gets it right. It says in James, in the first chapter of the book of James, it says, when tempted to do wrong, do not say that God is tempting you. And I think that that's where we got the, um, the information from Pope Francis. Pope Francis uh, talked about maybe um, possibly changing the Our Father. From lead us not into temptation, but not the, but an idea of not being overcome by temptation. The temptation is from the devil, but not allowing us to be overcome by it. Um, and so, really, when we think about being overcome, a lot of times, you know, there are difficulties and struggles that people have that seem to be impossible, that seem to be, you know, immense. Um, but I think one of the things that we can take from it in the normal temptations are one is that it puts our faith in God, um, that the devil is going to tempt us, is going to tempt us to power, to pleasure, to greed, uh, to, um, you know, authority, to uh, over others, to lording over others, um, all these kinds of things the devil is going to continue to tempt us to do. But do we have walk within our own strength or do we place our trust in God? And so even the evil that the devil wants to do can help us to uh, be faithful to God. 
The other thing that it does is that sometimes when, when, when difficulties and struggles become difficult, uh, the, sometimes the best answer is just flee. We think about in Proverbs uh, four, uh, chapter 4 or 1 Corinthians uh, 6.18. 6.18 says flee fornication. Um, uh, Proverbs 4, again, when difficulties and temptations come to flee those temptations. And so I think those are wise things. Sometimes the best thing to do is just maybe think about what we can do. Maybe, you know, uh, go call a friend or go go out and do something. Get, a, get our mind away from it. Um, that those can be the best ways and remedies to help us during this Lenten season. And so temptations are inevitably going to come. And I think the one thing is, is that is that I told the students at the school that the devil doesn't have to come up with a new playbook because pleasure, wealth, um, power, those things have continued to work over the millennial millennium. So why would he have to come up with something different? But again, what we can do is we can try to place our trust in God and not walk in our own strength. And when the difficulties and struggles become too much, to be able to think about what is our out, you know, whether it's talk to a friend, um, go out, do something, you know, go 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 buy something at the store, you know, buy buy groceries at the store, just get away from it. Um, that can be of great help during this Latin season. Thanks, God bless.